H&M has steadily grown into one of the biggest names in fashion, currently standing at about 5,000 stores. I have no doubt that many of the people watching this have shopped at one of these stores before, considering they're the second largest clothing retailer in the world, behind only Inditex, the Spanish company who owns a direct competitor of theirs called Zara. H&M is also European, with their headquarters being in Sweden. They've been reporting sales of about 200 billion Swedish krona each year, which converts to about $20 billion, ranking them among the 500 biggest companies in the world. I mean, this is a major retail chain that has used some clever and some controversial ways to grow to that size. In this video, I want to talk about the unlikely history of H&M while highlighting what I believe to be the six biggest reasons behind their success. Starting off with the Person family, who has been heavily involved in the ownership and operation of the company through its entire existence, going all the way back to Erling Person, who founded it in the 1940s. See, shortly after World War II had ended, he went on a trip to the United States where he noticed these large high volume stores that appeared to be doing well. The following year he was inspired enough by the concept to open his own store in his home country of Sweden. He named it Hennis, which is the Swedish word for her, because originally it sold exclusively female clothing. That was the case for the next 20 years or so, until a key acquisition shifted the course of the company. He was looking to expand their product offering, so he went out and bought an outdoors type store called Moritz, you know the type of place that sells stuff for fishing and hunting, well, he shut down all of those operations except for the sales of men's sportswear. That deal not only widened their customer base and started their transformation into a family clothing company, it also caused them to change their name. When Hennis combined with Moritz, the resulting company was named Hennis and Moritz, which of course was later abbreviated to H&M. By the way, I am sorry for all of these pronunciations. I confess, I am not a native Swedish speaker. By 1982, when H&M had grown to dozens of locations throughout Europe, Erling stepped down from his CEO position after 35 years and was replaced by his son, Stefan Persson. He went on to run the company for many years, helping further develop their logistics and overall business strategy, and still owns about 36% of the company, making him a multi-billionaire and the richest man in Sweden. I should also mention that Stefan's son, Carl Johan, also served as CEO for over a decade, ending in 2020. So yeah, the Persson family has had heavy influence over H and M to a point where they are greatly responsible for shaping it into what it is today and likely played a big part in the rest of the reasons on my list. The next one of those being geographic expansion because they have been able to do it so effectively, generally using the slow and steady approach, playing it safe by not taking out too much debt or overextending themselves. They have kept it at a pace where they've been able to keep close enough control over the quality of the clothing and the operations of their stores. I mean, they are the second biggest of their kind but they've been at it for 75 years now. The first 17 of which they were entirely in Sweden, it was another 12 years before they opened a store outside of Scandinavia, and another 24 years before they opened one in the United States. In 1974, just as they were making their debut on the stock market, is when they abbreviated their name to H&M, which I have to think is at least in part so they can go by something that was much simpler and easier to pronounce in non-Swedish speaking countries. They have grown into such a global company that they have around 5,000 stores in 77 markets around the world, yet they aren't too reliant on any one of them. Their two biggest markets are in Germany and the United States, each of which only account for about 14% of their total sales. I think that's enough to prove that H&M has been smart when it comes to expanding their presence into new areas. My next reason behind their success is probably the biggest and the most controversial one, fast fashion. It's a popular business model in the clothing industry that I have already talked about on this channel before, but really quick, it's characterized by lower quality, low prices, and high turnover. Basically, H&M designs their own clothing and then has it manufactured quickly by inexpensive suppliers in foreign, oftentimes developing countries. It's high volume, low margin, meaning cheaper clothing that they sell at low prices, but they sell a bunch of it. It is a whole system that ensures they have a revolving selection of trendy clothes so people will continue to come back, potentially daily, and discover new stuff. Many other stores, like Zara or Forever 21, do 
something very similar, but H&M was among the first. As I've expressed, they have been doing this for a long time and are actually considered to be a pioneer of fast fashion. So considering they've been utilizing an effective model like that for many decades now, I think would make it a huge reason behind their success, but there is a downside. These articles of clothing are not the most durable. They are typically meant to be worn only a few times and then thrown away, which can absolutely have a negative impact on the environment when it's happening three billion times each year. Fast fashion has been criticized and protested for these reasons, and H&M is easily one of the all-time biggest offenders. Though I should say that there have been multiple efforts made by the company to try to reduce their negative impact, recycling and things of that nature. To me anyway, the most notable ones seem to be establishing the H&M Foundation in 2014. It was originally funded with $180 million that came from the personal accounts of the person family, with the main goal of improving these types of issues, and their goal of becoming climate positive, meaning net zero emissions by 2040. Now, clearly that is still many years away, so whether or not they're doing enough or if it's truly effective, I have no idea. It has been debated, so I recommend that you do your own research and draw your own conclusions. All I'm trying to say here is that whether or not you approve of it, H&M has built a multi-billion dollar company centered around the clever, yet potentially dangerous, concept of fast fashion. My next reason behind the success of H&M is the internet. Even though they are primarily a traditional retail store, they have been effective in adopting to e-commerce and utilizing the internet to strengthen their sales. I think it's interesting that in 1980, well before online shopping, they made a big investment in sending orders through the mail. They bought the Swedish mail order company that quickly became a significant part of their business. They started actually selling things on the internet fairly early in 1998, and it has since become about a third of their business. In 2021, 32% of their $20 billion in sales came from online shoppers, because out of those 77 markets around the world with physical stores, 57 of them were accompanied by online offerings. Now, the H&M company is also the owner of multiple other much smaller brands that you may or may not recognize based on how you do your shopping or what part of the world you're from. But two of these brands are exclusively online platforms. They're called Afound, started in 2018, and Selpy, the majority of which was acquired the following year. In 2020, likely accelerated by the effects of the pandemic, they announced that they would close about 5% of their stores so they could better focus on digital offerings. They really are trying to create a system that integrates the physical and the online stuff together. You know, you can pick up online purchases in the store, you can scan an item in the store and find it online in case they don't have the right color or the right size of the location. Just a lot of integration between the two. Another reason behind the success of H&M is celebrity endorsements. For a long time, they have been utilizing the appeal of notable names to get people interested in their clothing. The first of which goes all the way back to the 1970s. When they first started selling cosmetics, they advertised it appropriately with a campaign starring a key member of the Swedish band ABBA. In the 1990s, they shifted their marketing strategy away from newspaper ads in favor of giant billboards strategically located in major European cities. Those billboards would commonly feature some of the most popular supermodels of the time. I'm talking about Cindy Crawford, Naomi Campbell, Claudia Schiffer, very recognizable faces in the industry drawing people's attention over to H&M. Some of the more notable endorsements in recent times have come from Lana Del Rey, Beyonce, Katy Perry. In 2015, she recorded Every Day is a Holiday, her first ever Christmas song specifically made for her H&M campaign. As recently as 2022, Pete Davidson was even featured in his own campaign, so clearly a wide range of endorsements here. In the fashion industry, where so much of it is based on the perception of the brand, it has been effective to have these influential people endorsing and elevating the perception of it. I mean, hey, if H&M is good enough for Pete Davidson and his parrots, I guess it's good enough for me. My final reason behind the success of H&M is similar to the previous one, not just endorsements, but full-on collaborations, oftentimes with celebrities or designers. The first one of these was in 2004 with popular German designer Karl Lagerfeld. Now, this collaboration is considered to be somewhat groundbreaking. Here we had a guy that was well-respected in the fashion world for his work with high-end luxury brands, and here he was personally collaborating with a low-priced fast fashion brand like H&M. I realize that stuff like this is so much more common today, but at the time it was practically unheard of and it was actually Actually, this collaboration that helped open the gates for it to continue happening. But it's cheap. What a depressing word. 
It's all about taste. The entire collection sold out almost instantly, of course, because where else would you buy something that was designed by Karl Lagerfeld at a low price like that? It showed the world how successful something like that can be. H&M followed up on it with collaborations with other well-known designers like Stella McCartney, other fashion brands like Versace, and of course other celebrities like Madonna and David Beckham. Again, so much of the fashion industry relies on brand perception, and collaborations like these have done so much to legitimize the H&M brand. So there you have it. These are what I have identified as six of the biggest reasons behind the growth and success of one of the biggest, most successful retail clothing brands in the world. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about H&M? Considering they are one of the biggest clothing retailers ever with stores all around the world, I'm guessing you have been there or at least familiar with them, so what do you think? Do they have a good selection, reasonable prices, decent enough quality? How do they compare to the other fast fashion retailers? Or maybe you avoid fast fashion altogether. There's a lot to consider when evaluating this store. Also, I'm curious, what do you think of the story of H&M? Because at its core, it's a story of a family growing a single Swedish store into a global sensation. And I hope that this video was able to give you a decent overview of how all of that happened. So any other thoughts you have about H&M or anything else I talked about in this video, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.